Before we get into this video, I want to give a huge shout out to our sponsor, MailTag. MailTag is a free Chrome browser extension that allows you to track your emails in real time, schedule your emails to be sent later, and automate your email follow-ups. And the best part is it's completely free. Be sure to check out MailTag in the Chrome store. The link is also in the description below. Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, we're going to take a look at two of the most popular programming languages in the world of web development, and that's PHP and Python. So we're going to look at a few different categories and compare things like learning curve, popularity, and so on. Now, before we begin, there's a couple really important points that I want to make and I want you to keep in mind throughout this video. So one is there's, there's no general and clear answer for everyone. And to say that PHP is better or Python is better with no context behind it, it's just, it's foolish. And it's something that you'll never see me do in my videos. The purpose of these comparison videos is to really just take a look at both technologies in an unbiased way. And it is unbiased because I use both, I like both, um, just to help people decide which path they may want to take. All right, it's also to just to learn more about the languages and what they're generally used for. And I base these videos on facts, research, uh, general opinion, as well as my own opinion, because like I said, I have worked with both throughout the years. Now with that said, don't ever get all of your information from one place, such as this video. When you research anything, make sure you have multiple credible resources, because there's a lot of fanboys out there that they'll just, they'll just trash whatever they don't use. If they're a PHP developer, they'll just trash Python any chance they get. Maybe they had a bad experience and they didn't understand it and they just want to discredit it. And you can't listen to trash like that because it's just it's based on pure emotion. It's not based on any kind of scientific data or facts or, or anything of any intelligence. So that's the reason I make these videos is to kind of combat that kind of stuff. All right, so the first thing that I want to address is the fact that Python and PHP, although they're often compared, that it's almost like comparing apples to oranges because of the, the language use. PHP is strictly for building web applications. It's extremely popular for web development on its own or through frameworks or through content management systems like WordPress. That's its job. That's what PHP does. Python, however, is it's used for web development, but it's also used for many other things. So it's a general purpose language and Python is getting more popular every day, but not necessarily for web development, machine learning and AI. It's huge right now and Python plays a big role in that genre. Okay, same with data science, automation, stuff like that. So there is a very clear difference in the two languages and their purposes. So before you can even ask which language is better for you, you really need to do some thinking about what you want to do. If you're interested in machine learning and AI or data science or anything else that Python is excellent at, then that's probably your clear choice. But if you're interested in building full stack web applications, web APIs, anything that PHP and Python do in a similar way, then you have some more digging to do. And since this channel is almost purely web development, I'm guessing that's what most of you guys are interested in. All right, so let's talk a little bit about popularity. So the results of the 2018 Stack Overflow survey came in, which is a pretty um, pretty respected survey. It gave PHP a popularity score of 30.7 and Python a score of 38.8. Okay, it also said, and I quote, Python has a solid claim for being the fastest growing major programming language. So that along with a lot of other resources all point to Python surpassing PHP in popularity. But again, Python is used for many more things um, than PHP is. PHP has its little small world of web applications. If we're talking about popularity of, of just that, of websites, of web apps, then PHP blows Python away. If you look at the numbers of websites that use PHP over Python, then PHP is a clear winner. Okay, WordPress is a huge component of that, among other frameworks like Laravel. So both languages are, are used by large companies. Most big companies and websites use multiple technologies. 
but PHP is used, for instance, by Facebook, uh, Wikipedia, Yahoo, and, and many others. And then you have Instagram, parts of Google, Spotify that use Python. So neither language has a, a shortage of credentials in that area. All right, and you can do a quick search to see what companies use what, and they're both pretty popular. All right, so syntax and elegance. Now, one thing that I've noticed is talking about popularity in the industry and popularity among developers is really two different things. PHP is very practical as far as deployment, hosting, um, you know, WordPress content management, things like that, which makes it great for developers. But on the other hand, there's also so much poorly written PHP out there. And the fact is that it, it, it lets you write poor code and it still works. It's really left kind of a bad taste in the mouths of, of many web developers. Um, as far as syntax and elegance, it's not that far up on the scale. And too much freedom can definitely be a bad thing. Um, and we'll talk about this you know, throughout, throughout this video. But PHP was actually the first language that I learned before JavaScript. And I've written some pretty bad PHP, just like most of us. And the reason for that is one, there was a lot of bad tutorials and courses out there. And two, what I wrote still worked, okay? And when you're a new developer, if it works, it works. You don't realize that, yes, it works, but it's extremely insecure and prone to SQL injection, or it's not scalable at all and nobody can read your code. The term spaghetti code usually refers to PHP code. Um, now with that said, just because there's a lot of bad PHP out there doesn't mean that you can't write good PHP code. So you just need to take the time to learn the best practices, focus on object-oriented clean code with classes rather than uh, just a procedural mess that no one can read. Okay, if you do that, PHP can be incredible. Okay, as long as you, you learn to write it correctly, it's a great language. Um, Python, on the other hand, is much more strict in its syntax and how it lets you put things together, which makes it cleaner. And in turn, I think it gets more respect from, from programmers. Um, I know that, you know, like I said, PHP kind of rules the, 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 web, the web area. Um, but not everybody that writes PHP actually likes it. I've actually known a lot of developers that worked with PHP almost exclusively and hated it. Um, so it, like I said, the popularity, the popularity in the industry doesn't really reflect the popularity with developers themselves. Um, now, many people such as myself like the C style syntax that PHP uses. Python doesn't have that. It uses indentation uh, over curly braces. And it, it is, I guess, more readable, but I don't know, maybe it's just me being a JavaScript developer. I just like the C style um, curly braces and, and semicolons, uh, things like that. Uh, just preference, I guess. So this brings us to learning curve. Now, a lot of what I'm going to say here comes from my own experience. Um, when you talk about what's easy or hard, everyone's different. So take all of this along with this whole presentation with a grain of salt. OK, also keep in mind, I'm much more fluent in PHP than I am with Python. Now, I think Python has a much cleaner and clearer way of doing things. There is a right way and a wrong way, and if you do the wrong way, it's not going to work, which helps with the learning curve. But at the same time, I think that even though the syntax is more readable without all the curly braces and arrows and all of that, the scope of what's happening is a bit harder to understand than in PHP. Um, I think that aside from the actual code, just the scope of what Python is capable of is also much more vague than PHP. Before I learned anything about Python, I didn't know what the hell it was used for. And I think the, that the fact that it's so diverse and it's used for so many things is what kind of confused me. Um, a, a lot of things that, uh, you know, a lot of things like machine learning, it, it's just complicated in general. So since Python is used for those complicated topics, it might be looked at as a complicated language. Now, PHP, on the other hand, its purpose is clear as day. You build database-driven web apps, and, and that's it. So in that aspect, I think PHP is easier. 
Now, as far as the the, um, the ease of syntax goes, for me, PHP was a little easier because uh, I like the C syntax style. Um, and if you're coming from JavaScript or you're coming from, uh, let's say, C sharp or something like that, you'll probably have an easier time learning a C another C syntax language um, rather than something like Ruby or Python or something that uses indentations and doesn't use curly braces and, and stuff like that. Um, now, what is hard about PHP and what really sucks is that the right way and the wrong way is not always clear, okay? And the wrong way often works, but it causes more problems down the line. Uh, another thing, it's not very secure by default, so you really have to look into securing your application if you're using vanilla PHP and not some kind of framework that takes care of that stuff for you. Okay, I will say that it's gotten a lot better for some of you older developers that used to use PHP 4 back in the day and procedural style, um, the procedural style MySQL library. You would look up like preventing SQL injection um, for let's say a post request or a get request or something like that and you'd find 30 different answers and every answer would have comments saying no that's wrong so after 30 answers and after two hours of searching you're back where you started and you still don't know what the hell to do which way is the right way um, luckily now with with PHP 5 and then PHP 7 uh, we have PDO with prepared statements. We have filters, stuff like that. It's much easier than it used to be. All right, so to sum it up, uh, my, in, my experience of learning both languages, if I were to compare, the, compare learning them to, let's say, building a piece of furniture, learning Python was like following a single booklet of a particular set of instructions to build something that was fairly complicated and learning PHP was like having 20 sets of instructions to build something fairly easy um, not knowing exactly which one to follow or having to kind of Mickey Mouse it together using multiple instructions but again some of that stuff is isn't relevant today because PHP has greatly improved in that aspect uh, but it still does have that I mean it still has these problems they're just not as bad as they used to be all right, so let's talk about uh, frameworks and content management. So in my opinion, both languages have two incredible frameworks. PHP has Laravel and Symfony, and Python has Django and Flask. And you'll see some others here as well. I've used all of the PHP ones. I personally do like all of the PHP ones, um, but you're not really going to see jobs using like CodeIgniter or CakePHP anymore, at least not, not a lot of them. Um, the ones that I mentioned mentioned are really the top dogs. So Laravel is just incredible. I've said it before. Even people that despise PHP, they, they have a respect for Laravel because of the work that's been put into it, the elegance, the ease of use. Um, Symfony is also gr a great framework. Laravel actually uses Symfony components. And Symfony 4 is now a micro framework to start with. So you can use it for like microservices and backend APIs. Um, you can also build it into a full-fledged large-scale application, um, which is really cool. And I've used Slim. Slim is a, another micro framework for building API, RESTful APIs. Um, now, as far as Python goes, it has Django and Flask, which are two very different frameworks, which is good because it depends on which type of developer you are as to which is better for you. Now Django is very high level. There's uh, a certain way to do things, the Django way. It reminds me a lot of Ruby on Rails. Um, some, some people agree with that. Some think it's crazy. Uh, it's just my personal opinion. Similar to Python itself, it maps things out for you, which is good for the learning curve because it, it, it allows you to not make too many mistakes. Um, not to mention it's extremely powerful when it comes to web applications there's not much you can't do with Django um, setting up an admin area in, in a couple commands there's you know migrations there's there's a lot to the framework it's really elegant and it's really easy to use and then flask on the other hand is also a great framework but it gives you much more freedom it's much more low level 
and it doesn't give you enough to actually hang yourself with but you can you can you have the freedom to structure your files how you want you can put everything into one single file if you want and it's also really powerful so um, I would I would suggest either one they're both great I do have a series on flask uh, if you're interested as well now um, both languages have great package managers Python has pip and PHP has composer setting those up on different platforms has become pretty easy um, there was a time when setting up Python with pip on Windows was really difficult um, but now with Python 3 pip just comes installed with it and there's no need to install it separately uh, also setting up the virtual environment that Python recommends is pretty easy as well on all platforms all right, so when it comes to um, con content management, there's really no comparison. PHP just wins hands down against any language. WordPress is still very popular, and it allows you to quickly build sites or applications where clients can log in and they can update and create content. Um, this is very valuable for freelancers, and it's actually where I got my start from. Uh, WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, although Dru Joomla and Drupal have really fell off quite a bit, uh, but WordPress actually has a huge percentage of the websites on the web now. Um, I don't know the exact number, but it is significant. All right, so when it comes to deployment, PHP is simple and cheap. You can use a $5 per month shared hosting account if you want. Now, with that being said, that doesn't mean that that's what you should do. Shared hosting isn't the best choice unless it's a small application and you don't expect a ton of traffic from it. If it's a large scale app that you put your all into and you want it to succeed and perform really well, then no matter what language you use, you're going to put some work and, and some research into deployment and hosting. So for Python, you have a few options. Um, I would suggest using cloud hosting like DigitalOcean. They actually have pre-built pre droplets where you can already have Python and the virtual environment installed. You can choose to have Django all set up if you want. Um, there's also, you know, services like Heroku or AWS. Um, you know, you don't have as much freedom with those services, but it's a bit easier to deploy, uh, especially Heroku. And deployment can be tricky for any technology. Uh, but the fact is, with PHP, you can pretty much throw throw it up anywhere, whether it's vanilla PHP or WordPress uh, or something like that. It, you can pretty much host it anywhere, which is a, a nice nice advantage. All right, so let's wrap this up. My bottom line and advice is to one, find what you want to do. Look look at job stats. Figure out what you're passionate about. Do you want to build web apps, or are, are you interested in data science, um, AI, etc.? anything but web apps Python is probably the clear choice over PHP but if it is web development that you're interested in uh, run through some tutorials documentation take a period of time to see what you like and don't like about each language um, that's one thing that I, I didn't really talk about is enjoyment maybe PHP has a few more jobs but if you hate writing it then you should probably look into Python or something else, of course. I mean, these aren't the only two languages, the only two choices. Um, I prefer Node.js over both, but that's not part of this video. Um, I'd suggest reading and, and watching other videos like this so that you can have more than one perspective. I'm just one dude, and I can only give you so much information. Um, I only have so much experience. Um, so, you know, don't take all of your advice from one source even if that source is as awesome as I am. Um, I'd also suggest <laughs> building something of your own in both technologies. Uh, it doesn't have to be vanilla. Maybe build a small Django app or a small Laravel app. Um, all, all of this stuff you know, may take a month or so, but that month is really worth deciding your fate and deciding what technology, what language you want to focus on for the majority of your career and um, you know finally pick one and run with it until you're making six figures a year all right so that's going to be it guys hopefully you found this useful and i didn't piss too many php and python developers off uh, remember this is just one point of view take everything with a grain of salt and that goes for any comparison type video that i do all right so that's it follow me on social media if possible and i will see you in the next video
Before I go, I just want to give another huge shout out to our sponsor, MailTag. MailTag is a free Chrome browser extension that allows you to track your emails in real time, schedule your emails to be sent later, and automate your email follow-ups. And the best part is it's completely free, so be sure to check out MailTag in the Chrome store. The link is also in the description below.